Hello, welcome back. So this is Steve from ACCAPC.com. So the question we're going to look at is the question number one from your December 2010 exam. So uh, this question has been published in your study notes so that you can see the updated version for this particular question. So the requirement for this particular question is to prepare a consolidated statement of cash flow for the Joe Cut group using the indirect method un under the IES number 7, statement of cash flow. So what we're going to do, 35 marks this question, is to set up this particular pro forma. Okay? So, we're going to prepare for this statement of cash flow. For the year ended, So let's see, for the year ended 30th November 2013. So under the IS number 7, we need to split those reconciliations of the cash flow under three headings. Firstly, operating cash flow, secondly, investing, and thirdly, financing. Okay? So, firstly, cash flow. from operating activities. Okay? So, leave two pages. And then, cash flow from investing activities and then cash flow from financing activities in the bottom of the uh, statement of cash flow we need to show the how the opening cash and cash and bank may be reconciled to the cash closing cash and cash and bank so the movement of cash and cash equivalents opening cash and cash equivalents closing cash and cash equivalents Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the, this question then. So, we are given the following uh, statement of financial position for the Joe Cut group. Okay, so we are given those information then. Let's say, so we've got the statement of, cash, uh, statement of financial position for 2002 and 2013. Firstly, we've got the property plants and equipment, so we tick tick for that, so we need to set up a working for that. So working one, PPE. We've got the opening balance from the question is to be quantity of 54. We've got the closing balance is to be 327. We've got the investment in property, investment property I should say. So work number two would be our investment property with opening balance is to be six and then closing balance is to be eight. We've got the goodwill. Work number three. Goodwill opening balance from the question is to be 68, closing 48. We've got the intangible assets opening 72, and the closing figure is to be 85. Okay, so 
So we've got the investment in associates. So this is working number five. We've got the opening balance of zero. We've got the closing balance 54. Also we've got the investment in equity instruments which means we own some shares in other companies. We've got the opening balance and the question is to be 90. We've got the closing balance 94. So, we've got the current assets, inventory, trade, receivable and cash and cash equivalent. What we're going to do is to turn to our cash flow from the operating activities. We start from the poverty before tax and then we need to firstly do the adjustment for the non-cash items leave a page for that. Once we've done that, we need to adjust for the working capital. So working capital, we are closing the question firstly, it's about the inventories, 128 and 105. So remember, for the assets, we're going to take the opening balance minus the closing balance. So opening balance, 128, 105, don't close off the brackets too soon. Maybe in the P2 exam, you'll be given some sort of subsidiary acquisition during the year. You have to include that, you have to include those figures into your calculation as well. For the trade receivable then, we've got 113 and 62. For the catch and catch equivalents, we need to include that into the bottom of the statement of cash flow. So we've got the opening catch and catch equivalent is to be 143. We've got the closing catch and catch equivalent is to be 232. So that we can work out the total different, uh, the total movement for the catch and catch equivalents for the year is to be 89, okay? So, right, so, it simply means, well, opening we've got 143, closing we've got 232, so that there will be a net increase in the catch and catch equivalent of 89. So, we've done all of that. Let's come to our equity section. We've got the uh, share capital, we've got the uh, retain earnings, we've got the other components of equity. So let's have a look at the share capital then. So the share capital will be included into the financing activities, isn't it? So, the so share capital, which means the company is trying to issue some shares, and get the cash from the shareholder. But um, uh, maybe in some circumstances in the P2 exam, that the share capital here will be split into the cash and non-cash items. So you need to identify that, okay? So in the question, we take, you know, it is the uh, equity elements, we're going to take the closing one as the opening. So the closing balance for this is to be 290, opening 275. We've got the retain earnings start kind of thing. So the, within the retain earnings, the only cash element, the only cash element will be the dividend payment. Okay. So here I'm not going to include in that. So other components of equity, I'm not going to include in that as well. So for the non-controlling interests, we're going to include in that. So we're going to set up a working, working number seven. For the NCI, opening balance, 
We are told the question is to be 36. Closing balance, we are told the question is to be 55. Let's have a look at the next one. So, non credit liability, we've got the long term borrowings. So this will be included into our financing activities because we borrow money, so this is our financing. So, the long-term borrowing. We're going to take the closing minus the opening, so we've got the 67 minus 71. Which seems to reflect the fact that this will be the repayments of the long-term borrowing leading to a cash outflow from the entity. So this, this is the repayment. And we've got the deferred tax, so we need to uh, open up another working, working number eight. Taxes. So opening DT, we're posing a question, is to be 41. And the closing DT, we are told in the question, is to be 35. And also we have got, uh, we've got the long-term provisions for the pension liability. So for the pension liability, it is that well, uh, uh, something to do with our defined, you know, uh, defined benefit scheme, that kind of thing. So we need to show that. So. Uh, the only cash flow within the IS number 19 would be the contribution, okay, the contribution. So, we need to show that movement. Work number 9 for the pensions. We've got the opening balance. In this case, it's to be 22. The closing balance is to be 25. I've got, and we've got the trade payables as well. So, trade payables will be included into the adjustment for the working capital, into your cash flow from your operating activities, so your payable balances, because this is a liability, so we're going to take the closing minus the opening. So, the closing 144 minus 55, And we've got the current tax payable, so this will be included into our working for taxes. So the working for taxes, we are posing the question, uh, we are told from our working, is to be working number eight. So opening current tax payable as a liability is to be 30. Closing one is to be 33. So, we've dealt with all of the elements within our statement of financial position. So, let's have a look at the statement of compensated income for the group by, the uh, by your examiner. And we've, we start from the poverty report tax for the group figure of 59. So, poverty report tax. 59. And then what we're going to do is to try to reconcile for the non-cash items. So, firstly, the share of profits of associates, this would simply reflect the fact that we own some shares in the associate. It is not necessarily the dividend that is paid by the associate. So, share of profits of associates, because we have added into the statement of comprehensive income, so we need to take it out. Six. Reverse the effect. Gains on the property, this would just be an accounting gain. So what we're going to do is to try to remove it, because it's a long cash item. Gain on what? On property. Ten point five. Also, we are told to the question that the finance cost paid is to be six. Um, in most circumstances, that the finance cost will be accrued expenses. So that we, this is not a cash item at all because we are not paid by cash. 
So what we're going to do is to add it back. But maybe we need to strip out uh, in some of the question that, well, the finance costs here, if we are not told any of these accrued expenses, so we cheat this particular finance cost as an interest payment by cash uh, in the bottom of the uh, cash flow from the operating activities. Okay? So, what we're going to do is that well, we've dealt with all of these, you know, uh, bits and pieces. And also, uh, you can see here that the share of the uh, profit of associates, we can include that into our working for the associate. So working for the associate is in your working number five. So we've got the income statement charge, okay? Income statement charge. So, in this particular case it's to be six. Okay? And we also told the gains on property of 10.5. Okay? 10.5. So, uh, we're not going to deal with that uh, because we don't know whether or not it's the PPE or it is the uh, something called the investment property. We're not going to deal with that. So we've got the income tax expenses is to be 11. Okay? So if that is the case, we can include that into our tax here. Income statement for the taxes is to be 11. Okay? So this is how we deal with the statement of compensed income. The next thing we have told you is that all the other compensed income after tax. So this will reflect the fact that some sort of gains and losses hasn't been realised. So we need to include that into our statement of cash flow as well. Firstly, it's the gains of the investment in equity instrument. So if that is the case, we can include that into our, our equity instrument working. Okay, equity instrument working. So this will be two. Uh, is to be working number six. So, the other compensed income charge is to be two. Okay? So, this is one. Next one. The losses on the property evaluation. Okay? So, property relates to PPE seven. We can include that into the working number one. Lots from the OCI is to be 7. And we are told to measurement losses on the defined benefit plan of 6. We can include that into the pension. Where is the pension? No, working number 9. But the OCI is to be 6 because it's a losses and because we are going to account for the liability so that the losses positive figure. So, uh, we've got those bits and pieces. So, we've got under compensed income, we've got the uh, profit attributable to uh, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, owners of the parents, which is the contrary interest and non contrary interest. So, we're going to say, well, this is the total compensed income to the contrary interest and also to the non contrary interest. We're going to include that into the non-controlling interest. Here, working number seven. It's the income statement, or the OCI, is to be 10. Okay. So, next one, we are going to look at the uh, statement of changes in equity provided by the examiner. So, we've got, you know, the statement of changes in equity. It is, you know, for the year ended, which means it is just a reconciled process showing the shareholder of the company how the opening equity may be reconciled to the closing one. So we've got the balance brought forward, the balance carried forward. So somewhere between the two will be the items that can be you know, reconciled to you know, make the opening balance maybe different from the closing balance. So firstly, we've got the share capital, issue of share capital during the year 15. We've got the dividends. Okay, so this is where the most exciting bit may come from. Dividends from the retained earnings, this will always be a cash flow. So, 
uh, dividend to the financing activities. So this is the dividend paid. It's be a, to be a figure of five, isn't it? To the controlling interest. And also, we are posing a question that will be the dividend paid to the NCI of 13. So firstly, include that into the financing activity, dividend paid to the NCI, okay? Dividend paid to the NCI would be a figure of what? Would be a figure of 13. And we are told, to, uh, we are told that this is a dividend paid to the NCI, so that we need to include that into the working for the NCI, working number seven. So this will be the what? Dividend paid. Okay, of 13. And we are told to the question that will be a right issue. Okay, right issue for the NCI of two, and also the acquisition for the NCI of 20. Right issue of two, acquisition of 20, okay? So, let's see. Total comprehensive income, that kind of thing, we're not going to deal with that right now. So, let's have a look at the following notes. So, this is the most exciting bit about this question. Lots of non-cash item adjustment then. So, on 1st December 2011, Joker acquired 8% of the audience shares of Tigaret. If that is the case, it's not gain any control or significant influence. It is just to be an investment in equity instrument. Joe Katz has treated this as an investment in equity instrument in the financial statements to 30th November 2012. We've changed the fair value taken to the popular loss for the year. That's fine. There's been no change to the fair value of the year to 30th November 2012. Okay. And on 1st January 2013, which is this year, that Jokat acquired a 52% of the shares and gained the control. If that is the case, well, the controlling interest now is to be 60%, so the NCI percentage is to be 40%. Okay? So he made the investment a uh, consideration of $13 million to gain the control. And at 1st January 2013, the fair value of 8% at the time of business is to be $5 million. So if that's the case, well, comparing with the previous one of only $4 million, there will be, your, uh, there will be a gain for this, isn't it? So if that's the case, well, firstly, we need to show this gain into the investment in the equity instrument in the working number six here. So, there will be your gain according to the notes number one, we're going to take five uh, minus four, okay, which can then gives us one. And also because we have, you know, got the control of Tigaret, if that is the case, goodwill arises. So, we need to calculate the goodwill as well. So. To be frank with you, this is a step acquisition, okay? So we need to calculate the goodwill. So, if you can remember from your early study that the step acquisition formula is that the fair value of the first investment is to be $4 on 1st December 2011. And we revalue this amount to 5, which means the revaluation would be 1, and the fair value of the second investment, we are posing a question is to be 30. Okay? So, this is how we uh, go for this. Okay? So, let's have a look at the next one. Okay. And um, the fair value of the NCI in cigarettes was. $20 million. So if that is the case, well, uh, we can say here this $20 million firstly included into our goodwill calculation the NCI at the date of acquisition 
is to be 20 and also the NCI can be reflected into the uh, working number 7 here is the acquisition ah, this has been presented in the statement of changes in equity so that we do not have to uh, account for it ok so this is from the statement of changes in equity or the note number 1 ok so that's uh, they've got the fair value of the businesses is to be 55 fine move on ok so this will be uh, quite tricky I should say really and also one final point I'd like to make is that well if you can see here at the time of the, uh, at the, time of the uh, at first, first January 2013 was 5 but previous is 4 so that there will be a revaluation gain so this will be also the non-cash item as well so we need to remove that into the adjustment for the non-cash items okay so this would be something called the revaluation of the equity instrument of total figure of one. This is a gain, okay? So the purchase consideration of $30 million comprises the cash element of $15 million. If that is the case, this would be in the investing activities. Okay? In the investing activities. So, firstly, investing activities is the sub acquisition for one. 15 and also the shares issue of 15 million dollars so we can see here this is just the share issue it's not a cash element and during the year the total shares issued is total at 15 million dollars we just calculated in our finance and cash flow here okay the total differences will be 15 and this 15 is not cash it is just the share so if that's the case, we need to subtract the 15 because we gain no cash in this case. So that the share cap issue, the share capital for cash is to be zero. So this is the chicken bit okay, in the exam. Right. Okay. So we are also told the fair value of the net assets uh, is as follows. And the net asset excluding the deferred tax issues. So if that is the case, maybe we are given some sort of deferred tax in a minute, we have to adjust for this particular net asset as well. So if you can see here, at the date of our acquisition, we include the subsidiaries PPE in terms of asset trade receivable and cash into our group. So that we need to add it back one by one. So PPE into work number one. The sub acquisition is to be a total figure of 15. 18 for the intangible assets, sub acquisition in the work number 4, and 5 for the trade receivable into our non cash items, uh, working capital, I should say. Uh, this will be your trade receivable of 5 plus the sub acquisition. And we've also got the cash. Ah, the cash here would be in the investing activity. It's simply because we have, uh, you know, uh, buy the what? Buy the subsidiary and subsidiary with the cash sheet so that we need to include that into our investing activities. So, uh, it's the sub acquisition also in the notes number one. Or seven as a cash inflow and total up all this together okay so which can then gives us a figure of let's see is to be 45 yeah so this will be the net asset at the data back position we can include that into our goodwill calculation in the working number 10 net asset 
at the date of acquisition, it's to be 45, okay? So if that is the case, okay, maybe we can work out the goodwill, but the net asset here is excluding any deferred tax issues, so that we need to adjust for that. So we are told the question that the tax base of the net asset is to be $40 million, and the tax rate is to be 30%. So that we can calculate the deferred tax liability adjustment for the next asset, we're going to take the uh, carrying value of 45 minus 40 for the tax base, multiplied by 30%, which can then give us 1.5. Okay. So we need to adjust for the next asset. If that's the case, well, the next asset total value is to be. 43.5 because for the net asset we pay for it and we have to pay the taxes in the future so we need to adjust for that okay we need to adjust for that it will be quite important isn't it so if that's the case we are going to total up these figures all together which can then give us a total figure for the goodwill is to be 11.5 and we're going to include that uh, goodwill figure into our working Number three, if my memory serves me right, yeah, goodwill is for this sub acquisition is to be 11.5. And also, we are totally in the question that we need to adjust for the deferred tax liability, so that we are going to include this 1.5 into the tax working as well. So, tax working, working number eight, we're going to say this would be the sub acquisition for the deferred tax liability adjustment, work number 10, or 1.5 we are going to increase the liability we are going to pay. So, okay, so uh, we've dealt with all of the bits and pieces over here. It's not all rocket science, really. So let's have a look at the second one. On 30th November 2013, which is the, at the year end, Tigaret make a right issue on a one for four basis. Okay, so if this is the case, well, this is the intergroup transaction, isn't it? So because after, after uh, the date of acquisition, it is the 1st of November 2013, we are in a single entity. So if the subsidiary makes the right issue and get the cash from the parent, if that's the case, this transaction should be eliminated. But the NCI is outside the group, so that we need to account for the cash uh, uh, for the NCI. So the issue was fully subscribed and raised $5 million in cash, so in theory, this five million dollars should be eliminated, but because we are only controlling sixty percent of the subsidiary, so that we need to account for another forty percent for cash of two million dollars. Again, okay? of two uh, million dollars. So, if this is the case, we are going to say. Well, this is the uh, receiving cash, okay, in the financing activities. So, what we're going to do is go for the right issue into our financing activities. From the note number two, we're going to take five multiplied by 40%, which can then give us two. So, this is how we deal with it. Um, within your state of chance and equity, you can see also the $2 million has been presented as well. But we need to make sure we're not copying the figures within the statement of can't change in equity. It is simply because maybe some sort of right issue, maybe $2 million will include the more cash item. So, once we've calculated for that, so we're going to include that figure into our statement of cash flow. Note number three then, uh, the group companies, the Joe Cut, pe purchase a research project from a third party including a certain patents on 1st December 2012 for $8 million. If that's the case, we're going to include that into the investing activity because we are purchasing the uh, what? The intangible asset. And also we are going to update the intangible asset uh, account as well. So firstly, within the investing activities, the acquisition of intangible assets for the note number two is to be eight. Okay. And also we're going to update the intangible asset account 
uh, within your work number four, is our third acquisition according to the notes number three. Which is really no, no, notes number three. It's eight, okay, increasing the intangible asset. So during the year, the parent company incurred the further costs, which included two million dollars on the completing of the research phase. So should we do something about it for the two million dollars here? But the answer is no, because this two million dollars is being included into the statement of compensed income, so we're not going to do anything about it. And four million dollars in the developing of the product for sale. If that is the case, for the development costs. Uh, unless it's fulfilling the criteria, then it should be capitalised as an intangible asset according to the IAS number 38. So in this case, uh, in the cash flow statement here, we're going to include that into our uh, intangible asset as well. So the development costs, okay, development is to be uh, four, okay, development is to be four. And also, we're going to include that into the investing activities. To be four, okay? To be four. So, one million dollars for the initial marketing cost, which means, well, this one million dollars we have spent, this has been, been recognised into the statement of compensation income, we're not going to do anything about it. There were no additions to the intangible asset in the period other than those, the acquisition of the cigarettes, okay, of the cigarettes. So, uh, we've got the acquisition for the cigarettes, it's to be 80, to be incorporated, so we have accounted for that, okay. Next note. Notes number four. It's the Joe Cut operates the defined benefit scheme and the current service cost, which means the employees works for me, is to be $10 million. If that is the case, we're going to debit the income statement for 10 and credit the liability for 10, which means this is a long cash item. Firstly, it should include it in it should be included into the operating cash flow. Secondly, for the non-cash item. Secondly, uh, it should be included into the pension account working. So $10 million firstly from the operating activities accounted for the non-cash item to the current service cost we need to add it back. So this question is to be 10 and also from our working for pension current service costs 10 because increasing the liability and also the parents company enhanced the benefits and the past service cost included is to be two million dollars so that we're going to debit the income statement of two and credit the liability of two so this will be another non cash adjustment so firstly past service costs is to be two and also non cash items Two. Also, we are posing the question that the expected return on the plan asset was to be eight million dollars. Okay, so if that is the case, well, uh, we can see here expected return. We're going to debit the asset, plan asset, and credit the income statement. This is nothing to do with our cash, so we need to include that into the non-cash item adjustment. So return on pension asset. To be eight, okay, minus it, minus it, because it's been included uh, as a plot figure into the statement of cash flow, a uh, statement of compensation income. For the pension, then, uh, the return on plan assets, reducing the liability of eight. Next one, note number five. Parents company owns an investment property, which is the property for investment purposes according to IS number 40. During the year, part of the heating system of the property, which is a carrying value of $0.5 million, 
was replaced by a new system costing $1 million. If that's the case, firstly, this not $0.5 million over here, okay, this not $0.5 million over here would be a decrease for the investment property. So it needs to be firstly included into the investment properties account. Work number two is that well, the old investment property from the note number five is to be not 0.5, okay? Is to be not 0.5, okay? And we are also told in a question that we're going to replace it with $1 million of the uh, new asset, okay? Of the new asset. If that is the case, firstly, this should be included into the investing activities because we invest the money into uh, buying these new assets. So firstly, investing activities. Secondly, would be in the investment properties account to try to increase the asset value. And thirdly, for the differences between the two, okay, for the differences between the two, it is a what? It is a um, gain, okay, for the investment property. So we need to uh, try to um, try to say uh, this is not a game. to say. Um, let me start it again. So the differences between the two of 0.5 million dollars will be the disposal, okay, disposal of the investment property. So um, we need to include that into our non-cash item adjustment as well. So firstly, include it into the investment uh, cash flow is the purchase of new investment property. And in this case is to be note number five, is to be one. And also within the investment properties account, the new investment property is one and also for the non-cash adjustments okay non-cash adjustments so the investment property disposal okay of 0.5 okay so this is how we account for the note number five note number six then so Paris company has exchanged surplus land with a carrying value of $10 for the catch of $15 million and the plant valued at $4 million. So firstly, we have decreased the carrying value of the property. So this will be reflected in the working number one for the PPE. So this will be the land disposal of 10 from the notes number six. Okay. And secondly, we are going to spend uh, fifteen million dollars to, to purchase this. Okay? To purchase this. So, uh, so uh, no, we are, we are going to get the cash of fifteen million dollars, so sorry. So we're going to exchange the land, giving away the land and get the cash of fifteen million dollars. So this will be reflected into our investing activities. So, this would be the sale of the PPE of 15. And also, okay, and also uh, we've got the, uh, the plant value at $4 million as well. So, if that's the case, we can include that into our PPE working. The surplus uh, plant. Form. And also, this is the cheeky point, is that well, we've got 19 in total, but we have just given away of 10, which means we have made a gain of 9. If that is the case, this will be an accounting gain. Accounting gain it should be eliminated into the non-cash adjustments. So, gain on PPE. Work number six, uh, notes number six, is to be nine, okay? Subtract that, okay? 
and also depreciation for the key unit was $27 million. So we are going to include that into, firstly, more cash adjustment for the depreciation, because this is the accounting expenses of 27 at the back. Secondly, in the work number one, it's the depreciation. It's to be 27 minus 8, because it will reduce the asset down. Notes number seven, goodwill relating to all of the subsidiaries to be impaired. So the goodwill impairment was to be 100% for the subsidiary. So that's fine. So what we're going to do is to maybe try to look at the goodwill, um, goodwill figure in the working number three, if my memory serves me right. Yeah, it's working number three. So we've got the opening plus the subsidiary acquisition is to be 79.5. And... The closing balance is to be 48, so that it will end up with a balancing figure for the goodwill impairment of 31.5. So this goodwill impairment will be included into the non-cash item adjustment. So goodwill impairment, because it has been subtracted, so that we need to add it back. It's to be 31.5, it's the non-cash adjustment, okay? Right, so, uh, let's move on. Notes number, uh, number 8 then, is the deferred tax of $1 million arises from the gains of the investment in equity in the year. Okay, so that's the case, well firstly, we're going to try to say, well this is the deferred tax, we need to include that into our tax working. Working number eight. So, this is the investment in equity instrument. According to the note number eight, is to be is to be one. Okay, and also, um, okay, okay. So, and also, uh, this deferred tax arises from the. Uh, you know, on, on the gains of the investment property, uh, gains on the investment in equity in the year. Okay, so if that is the case, we're going to charge it into the investment in equity as well. So this is the deferred tax effect. Note number eight is to be another one. Okay, another one. So. If you look back to the investment in instrument, is that what the company has firstly bought uh, the, uh, the, the investment uh, instrument and then uh, do some sort of uh, step acquisition. So when you're trying to do this step acquisition, we need to you know, transfer or de-recognize okay, that part of the uh, net asset. So within the investment in equity instrument here, is that what T companies subsidiary Next asset D recognition is to be five from your notes number one. To be look back here, just forgot one point. So look back to your notes number one. Okay. So now the investment in equity instrument is to be five. So we, we need to de recognize that. Okay. So. Okay. Right. And the associate did not pay any dividends in the year, which means the any balances within the associate account would be uh, the purchase of the associate during the year. So what we're going to do is to have a look at the accounts, okay, one by one. We just to close off uh, each of those. For work number one, uh, PBE 254 minus 7 plus 15 minus 10 plus 4 minus 27, which can then gives us 229 and the balance figure will be 327, which means that this will be additions for the cash spent in buying this PPE of a figure of 98 as a balancing figure. So if that is the case, this will be reflected into our investment activities. So purchase of the PPE, work number one, 98. For well, the investment property into work number two then. 6 minus 0 0.5 plus 1, which can then gives us 6.5. So the balancing figure 
would be 1.5. But um, what is the balancing figure? Is it in addition to purchase the investment property? We need to look back to the nodes. We need to look back to the investment properties nodes. In the nodes number 5, is that well, it uses the fair value model for measuring the investment property, which means the balancing figure would be the gains or losses. So this will, this will be accounting gains and losses, so that is to be 1.5 would be the income statement gain. So you need to include that into the non-cash item adjustment. Investment property gain from the working number two is to be 1.5, so check that. Working number three then. It's the goodwill, we've dealt with that. Working number four is to be something called the intangible asset. We're going to take 72 plus 18 plus 4 plus 8, okay, which can then gives us a total figure of, I don't know, this uh, calculate for that. 102. But the closing balance would have been 85, so that the balancing figure will always be the amortization for the uh, intangible asset is to be 70. So this will be included also into the non-cash item adjustment. Quite interesting, isn't it? Amortization, we need to add it back, is to be 17. So, work number four then, dealt with. Work number five, we're going to look at the investment in associates. We've got opening balance zero, income statement charge six, which can then give us six, and the closing balance is to be 54, there's no dividend paid by the associate, so that the only reason being, this will be your acquisition for the associate during the year, is to be 48, and this should be reflected into our investment activity. So, it's to be 48, yeah, work number five, invest, investment activities. So, acquisition of associates. This will be a total figure of 48 negative because we spend the cash out to acquire. Working number six, we've got the uh, investments in equity instrument. We've got 90 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 minus 5, which can then gives us 98. And the closing balance will become 94. This would mean that there will be your addition in paying cash into acquiring the equity instrument of 5. If that is the case, this will be reflected into the investment activity also, okay? So, investment activity, acquisition of equity instrument. In this case, it's to be five, okay? From your working number six. So let's have a look at the working number seven then. Work number seven, we've got the NCI, and I think I have just totaled up the balances. 36 plus 10 minus 13 plus 2 plus 20, it can give us 55. And we have to adjust for that into the finance activity for the dividend payment. So for the taxes then, we've got 41, work number 8, plus 30, plus 11, plus 1, and plus 1.5, okay? And uh, the closing balance is 35 plus 33, which can then, you know, the balance figure would be the tax paid is to be 16.5, which will be included into the operating activities. So, tax paid, work number 8 is to be 16.5. Work number 9 then, I've uh, got the pension. Ah, interesting part. 22 plus 6 plus 10 plus 2 minus 8, which can then gives us 32. And um, the liability has decreased from 32 to 25. This will be only the fact that we have put our money into the contribution scheme of 7. If that is the case, the contribution will be only one cash flow item according to the IS number 19, so that it will be included into the operating activity as well. So the contribution 
from day working number nine is to be seven. Okay, so we've dealt with all of the bits and pieces. So what about the interest payment? So we are not told any of these accrued expenses so that the interest payment would be the same as the finance cost here of six. Okay, where is it? Six. Okay then. So what we're going to do finally. We are going to you know we're going to check back to the statement of tax flow. So property for tax fifty nine and six for the share of property associate gain of property not as ten point five finance cost of six. Revaluation of the uh, uh, revaluation of the equity instrument minus one. We've got the current service cost ten two past service cost return of plan assets not point uh, eight. Investment property disposal is to be 0.5 and with uh, gains on property plants and equipment is to be 9, depreciation is to be 27. Okay, so depreciation is to be 27. Goodwill impairment 31.5 and we've got the uh, investment property gain of 1.5, amortization of uh, 17. Okay. And also we've got the adjustment for working capital for the inventory is to be 23 for receivable close up for 56. Uh, for the payable is to be 89. For the contribution, tax paid, interest paid, so that would be no problem. So that we've got the cash flow from operating activities is to be 266. So in the exam, don't try to write this sentence because you'll gain no marks for this because in the exam it will be impossible for you to get the figures right. Cash flow from investing activities, so let's check back. So we've got 15 for the sub acquisition, 7 for the sub acquisition, uh, acquisition of the intangible asset of 8, development of 4, uh, purchase of new investment property of 1, sell PPE of 15. Purchase of PPE of 1898, uh, so purchase of PPE would be a bracket, so made a mistake, okay? Would be a bracket because we spend the cash out. Uh, 48 for the acquisition of the associate, um, acquisition of the equity instrument would be 5, so that we've got the net figure for the cash flow from investing activity is to be. 157. What well, about for the financing activity? We've got uh, zero, dividend pay five, long term borrowing, long term borrowing we've got is to be four, uh, 13 for dividend payment to the NCI, and two for the rights issue, so that we've got 20. Okay, so this is the cash flow from financing activity. So in the bottom, uh, we're there with that. So what we're going to do is to tick tick for this particular question. So make sure you watch the recordings again. So this completes our question on December 2010, question number one, statement of cash flow.